not wine yet. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Welcome back to This is a Takeover. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am here to introduce your host, Shelby Death Ray Patterson. Thank you, David, and welcome to This is a Takeover. I'm Shelby Ray Patterson. And I'm Gina Belmont. And we're here to discuss Extreme Rules 2022. But first off, how are you, Gina? I'm good, Shelby. How are you? I'm good. I feel I feel tired. Yeah, same. <laughs> Hump day? <laughs> Yes, we're recording this on a Wednesday. Yep. And usually that's the the week where we get together anyway. Yep. We're always together to watch wrestling and catch up with latest, you know, episodes, AEW, NXT, whichever it may be, but most of the time. Most of the time it's AEW. <laughs> that or we just stop watching and then just talk to each other throughout that's the true. evening. <laughs> Well, and I I feel like there's so much going on a right lot now. Is and going on. I know we haven't recorded um, episodes in a while. No, it's been uh, a hot hot minute. Um, but so much has happened, <laughs> like <laughs> in real life stuff. Not oh just yeah, on not the even show. not even wrestling. <laughs> but I feel like this was kind of a nice escape from it all because this was. I think I heard someone say that this was like such a good representation of what sports entertainment is supposed to look like. Yeah. And I feel like we're getting, we're finally getting back to that. Yeah. Not the soap opera sports entertainment, but Mm -hmm. just enough, enough silly to get by, but still have (laughs) real matches, real work, Mm -hmm. you know, real athleticism come through. Well, and I think because, I just, I know I had said this to you off air. I just wanted to go ahead and talk about basically the whole reason why everybody watched Extreme Rules, which was to see Bray Wyatt return. The white elephant, I mean rabbit in the room. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Because, I mean, if you, unless you've been living under a rock. I mean, no judgment. Rocks are cool. No, it's fine. But If if that's your home of choice, like, that's cool. (laughs) But if you haven't, then you know that Bray Wyatt was slated to return at Extreme Rules, and it was basically foretold. They were giving hints during Raw, SmackDown, through other pay-per-view events, and just all over the place with stuff. Which I did enjoy. Yes! Right? Like, you had the cool, like, QR codes that if you popped up on the screen real quick, and you scanned it, and it took you to like a, a puzzle game that you had to solve and then it led you to this thing like so it was this is good level very of well planned out yeah and i think it basically everybody figured out yeah before the pay-per-view i that he was going to be there we did talk about this and i i had said there was a part of me on the inside like please Listeners know, I love Bray Wyatt. Of course, I was we all do. terrified of Bray Wyatt the moment I saw him. And I was like, <laughs> all right, this is what's up. Um, but there was a part of me on the inside that was like, what if it's some rando? And like everyone just <laughs> thinks it's Bray Wyatt. And then all of a sudden he comes out and it's some nobody that's like getting their first leg up. And we're all like, what? <laughs> like so mad. <laughs> Dogs and I talked about that a lot, and that person would have gotten eaten alive. Absolutely, like they would have been murdered, and their career would have been murdered. I hope that Triple H and the creative that they have in store now wouldn't do that. No, they're smart. Vince would have, but no. Well, I don't think Vince would have been able to come up with something like this. That's fair. You know, like true statement. From what I heard, the lead up to this and the build up so the all the white rabbit stuff and all of the stuff in between like the segments and the vignettes of Mm -hmm. of the white rabbit like popping in and out that was done by an independent writer who came in to the wwe writers room so the writers room didn't know anything about this so it made it like a different form of mystique because See, that the writers, is fun. Like, outside sources would go to the writers and be like, hey, like, what's the deal? And they're like, like what's going got- on? They're like, actually, 100%, I can't tell you because I don't know. That's right? cool. And so it was this guy, I, 
whoever's listening at home is probably shouting his name at the in the <laughs> car right now. But I, I can't remember his name, but it's someone who has worked with Bray Wyatt before. Oh. And they brought him in and he has written along with Bray all of the White Rabbit stuff. See. And that's, some that's why stuff. it's so good. See, <laughs> right? yes. So, oh. and I, I talked about when I took my notes, um, there was something that um, we saw when we watched um, and the entrance that he makes is just mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, the lights suddenly die right after the match with Riddle and um, Rollins, you know, all of the lights come on for somebody's like cell phones. It looks like fireflies are out there again. You know, all of a sudden you hear he's got the whole world, you know, so mm. everybody loses their minds, but there's a door and the door opens after a little segment and, oh my gosh, this bright blue light shines through and then he comes in with a mask, a brand new mask, and mm-hmm. he's got the lantern and the lantern's blue and then he takes the mask off and he's like, I'm here. And then, whoosh, lights and, out. And but, there's, oh. I mean, there's a whole, like, I, there was a whole story that oh. was told even before that happened. Yeah, there was. So you had like, oh. so I'm just, I'm, we're going to talk about the end at the beginning. I really don't care. No, but, this is, this is why you're listening anyway, guys. It like, is, I mean, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for everybody else on this card, but like no one was paying attention to your matches. Like, I'm so sorry. I, I, like everyone was wondering, okay, is he going to come in now? Is he going to come in over here? Like, where is like, he coming from? Is he going to come from under this ring? Like, exactly. Yeah. So. At the end of the Rollins uh, Riddle match, they do the whole, um, which this is an NXT call out yes. as well. They did the title card at the end, and then something else happened afterward. That is a NXT takeover thing. It's the best, and it's. I heard someone say it was like um, the NXT fakeout logo uh, to the main roster confirmed. Ah. <laughs> There's all these little things that Triple H has now oh, done man. in, and we'll talk about when we get into the main show. Yes. But, um, so the lights go out, and you have all the fireflies, and he starts singing, but then you ha- it takes you on a journey. Yes. Because you go throughout the arena, and then you see it's lit somewhere, and it zooms in real quick uh-huh. on, and it's all of human-sized versions Ugh, like of the cosplay puppets from the Ugh. firefly fun house so you have like it's the pig husky husk or something I, like yeah, that i forget that pig. one sorry um and then it went the rabbit and rabbit. sister abigail mercy and the mercy buzzard, the buzzard. And, and, and they're all in life-size form like oh man and that so bunny it zooms oh. out and then it zooms back in and then it zooms out zooms back in and then it zooms into the announce table where a severed burnt fiend head oh. is on the commentary desk and i know we give Corey graves and michael cole a lot of shit on this show a lot more Corey graves but yes but the way that they reacted Corey to graves was priceless he jumped to the heavens yeah his soul left his body i would too if it was pitch dark in an arena and then, and then <laughs> the light comes on me it's not even a spotlight it's just like a someone had like a work lamp that yes. they were just holding over the camera and it just enough that it would illuminate and you could Ooh. see that he- i would have jumped to the heavens too Mm-mm. um so then that goes out and then it goes to um a video package of oh but um the- so sorry but there was Bray himself. Oh, the fiend. The fiend was in the audience yes. as well. They panned to him, and there's somebody dressed as the fiend. And everyone lost their shit because they, they thought, thought that was him. it. But... but then it goes out again, and then we go to the video package where it was the Firefly Funhouse, but it had been abandoned. And there, and there were, were cobwebs oh. everywhere, and all the puppets were dead. And they just kind of zoomed around, and, and then you went to the TV, and the TV turns Ooh. on, and... A figure in a new mask is on, and it says very, very distorted. Yeah, it says, "Who killed the world? You did." Oof. And I was like, "Whoa, okay, I did. I'm so sorry." Like, uh-huh. like we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. I'm like, <laughs> sitting on my couch, like, like this, like <laughs> with my pillow up to my like covered like half in a blanket. Face. I'm like, no, I did kill the world. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I did to it. I'm a murderer. Exactly. And so then it goes dark again and then mm. the the door pops up. Oh, that door. And it was all like kind of swampy. 
kind of feel to it. Then it opens up and then the blue light comes through. And I know we're not sure if this is confirmed or not, yes, but I know but you had told me this off air. Yes. That that might be a tribute to Brody Lee. So Brody Lee's first entrance in AEW when he was announced to be the leader of uh, Dark Order, he made his debut and he comes in from the tunnel and in the tunnel, the light is blindingly blue, mm. like from backlit, just straight blue and he comes out and then you see who he is yeah so um listeners i'm sure you know um but brody lee and um bray wyatt were best friends um inseparable best friends and so when brody died it it took bray a really long time to come to terms with that and to accept and he went into depression and um he talked a little bit about it but not too in depth he took a break for a little bit and he came back with the fiend but if this is the case this makes me really excited to one see that hunter is more than okay with paying tribute to someone that's really worth it but two seeing this creative licensing and creative you know flow come back to the wrestler themselves yeah and i'm excited to see where this goes I'm getting real shattered glass vibes. Like, yeah, not shattered glass. I'm so sorry. Um, David, the uh, pers- uh, the movie where uh, James McAvoy is playing all the different personas. Shattered, right? Shattered. Split. 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 Okay, I was there was an S. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I, <laughs> but man, oh, haven't seen that movie. Go watch that. But well, with the you had that the, vibe. Yeah, definitely. You had the blue light. And then that went away. And mm-hmm. then you're like, okay, then that's it. We're done. There were like so many different things where you're like, okay, then that's it. He's finished. He's returned now. And then more happens. And then the next right? thing happens. And, and then, then the you, next thing. And then it goes dark. And then you see a blue lantern just standing there. And they're like, okay, that's it. He's returned. That's it. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> like, and there's more. There were just so many <laughs> fake outs to this return. And then you see the man from the TV step out and he has the mask and it it kind of reminded me of the of the v for vendetta yes mask yes that feel of it's recognizable enough as like a human face but there's something distortedly twisted about it yes and it's really creepy it's it's the mouth it's the mouth permanent smile so you and then so he comes out he has the lantern and then Everyone just loses their shit, right? Cause, duh. Well, cause, but then he takes his mask off, and then even a bigger pop happens, even though we all know that it's him. Like, right? we know. Like, he didn't have to do anything else. He literally could have just walked out, and then the lights went out, and then we would have gone home happy. But, no, he takes the mask off and then looks at the camera and says, let me in. Oh. Blows, the, blows the lantern out, and then end of pay-per-view. And I'm like, <laughs> hands up. Like, that's... that. The best return Mic drop. I think that I have ever seen. Yeah. Like in my historical time of watching wrestling, I think that was the best and most well executed return to wrestling I think I've ever seen. Well, that's the thing. It's like, I'm glad that, I don't want to say like they took notes, rather that Triple H is here and that's why this was so much better. But there's story with coming back there's admitting and accepting what all happened in his past throwing it together and still making something new come Mm -hmm. to light it's it's not accepting what's the word um celebrating like Mm -hmm. using your past to fuel your future and i think a lot of times like there's this i mean history and past of the company to say oh well that's dead like, don't think about that. Right. Like, yeah. don't, like, no, that didn't happen. They like, we, what are you talking about? They think wrestling fans have minds of goldfish, And right? it's like. Like, they, that we, that we don't remember yeah. all of wrestling history, even though, I mean, for us, the Wyatt family was what oh we were gosh. introduced to and what brought, you know, part of the reason why I came back to wrestling, that and Finn Balor. To date, there is, that's still one of my favorite matches is when. John Cena and him had that feud and all of a sudden the lights turn on. I get, I'm literally getting goosebumps just <laughs> thinking about it. And then all of a sudden there's a whole children's choir around the ring just singing. He's got the whole world. Like yeah. that's still one of the best matches like ever. 
Yeah. Like, I don't even remember the rest of them, like, who won. It no. doesn't matter. But that's the point. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because story is just as important as the wrestling. Yeah. In my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of other people disagree with that, but. Well, and I think it's, it, it boils oh. down to, like I said at the top of the show, like, it's wrestling versus sports entertainment. Yes. Right? Like, Bray Wyatt, in my opinion, would not work anywhere else no except wwe because everywhere else is so on the wrestling bandwagon right now which i'm i'm thrilled for i love AEW, Mm -hmm. right like i i think that is another itch that i get to scratch right with the pure technical wrestling but then you go to what wwe is turning back into now it is entertainment right yes bray wyatt could not have done what he did on extreme rules in AEW, in impact in roh anywhere else no right because wwe is spectacle based Mm -hmm. it always has been right so you take that and you put it somewhere else that is not spectacle based it's just cool he's here now like, I've been hearing a lot of people comparing this return to CM Punk's return. Right? No, nowhere near. Well, I, I can agree with that, but also I can see why they're comparing it, right? Yes. Because you had CM Punk's, which was on the, the, this is real life side. Yes. Right? Like, this is a man, Phil Brooks, who has not been in this business for over a decade. Yeah. For a lot of different reasons, but the, but the fact is he hasn't been here. Now he's returned, which is something that nobody thought they would ever see. Mm -hmm. So people are losing their mind about it. Yeah. But that's real life. People are losing their mind about Bray Wyatt's return because we don't, we didn't think we would ever see his character ever again. Yeah. We may have seen William Rotunda. Yes. Somewhere else, but we wouldn't have seen Bray Wyatt. Absolutely ever again if Vince McMahon still was there absolutely so I think that this outweighs that CM Punk's return Mm -hmm. because this is something that we didn't think we would get anymore is the mystical and the magic and the is is he going to go this way is he going to go that way like we don't even know now yeah no (laughs) which way it doesn't matter that's what because I mean. we're yeah. so excited for this ride. Right. So I think that the, that comparison is justified, but at the same time, it's, it's apples and oranges to it, me. It's parallel, yeah. but they're not going to intersect. Yeah. Um, also, there were reports um, that on Instagram, there are some members of the WWE roster whose profiles have been all blacked out. Yes. Yeah. And suddenly... Liv doesn't have any pictures and it's all black. And Mm -hmm. I I think Finn Balor was one of them as well. And so, yeah, there's a whole theory going around of the Wyatt six. Um, So basically this is potentially a new faction with him as the leader. So kind of like the Wyatt family, but um, that's what, what people are speculating because with the five fire, firefly funhouse characters Mm -hmm. plus him that's six so that's the theory right now um would be apparently happy with that apparently he's going to be on smackdown this coming friday so we'll see but i think we should talk about the actual show yes now we can get to the (laughs) pay-per-view well it just i felt like addressing it now made sense i don't know i didn't want to well one i didn't want to wait until the end of the episode (laughs) and two i just feel like it cast a kind of a shadow over the rest of the pay-per-view because everybody knew that he was going to be there. Yeah. So it, I can see that. I can it's see like that. when, I know I keep bringing him up again, but like when CM Punk returned, they kind of leaked that he was going to be there. Yes. Right. To boost sales and to get people to watch. Yeah. And then when he showed up at the very beginning of the episode, I can't tell you what the rest of the show was. Psh, no, yeah, no Right, one so I think that they, WWE did it right in putting him at the end. Yes. But it was kind of one of those things like, okay, I know this wouldn't make any sense, but like, what if he came back during the Liv and Ronda match? <laughs> right. Like, we how talking- cool would that be? Like, 
<laughs> Dogs was playing that game the entire right? pay per view. He's like, well, we've only got like maybe he would come out during this match, and then that match would end and be like, no, it's got to be that next one. The whole time. <laughs> it's crazy how using that now is is almost fueling everybody. Well, I think it's smart on their part Absolutely. because then it makes more people watch. It makes more people buy tickets to be there so that they could be there for Wyatt's return. Like dropping all these very blatant, obvious hints that he is the White Rabbit, I think was smart on their part because then it made more people want to be a part of it. Yeah. So, I mean... Overall, I think the show itself was still good. Oh, I just yeah. think it had that kind of Wyatt-sized shadow. Absolutely. <laughs> that was just kind of like, hey, I'm over here. Oh, like, now I'm over here? Could I be up here? You like, got to be quicker than that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, our the first match that we had, though, oh we had gosh. a uh, White Rabbit-like interference. Yes. Kind of. So, during... Because we had the Brawling Brutes which is Seamus, Ridge Holland, and Butch versus Imperium, which I, will just always be Imperium. I know their names, but they no, will forever and always I, be Imperium. No, it's Imperium. But I loved this match. Yeah. I, I wanted this to be semi-main. I understand mm-hmm. Hunter's mentality. Like, I get it. This is a great match to start with. Kind of loses or lo- loses, softens the blow for what comes after. Sure. Then you can pick back up again. Like I get the mentality, but I just want to see Sheamus and all <laughs> of the like. I mean, Imperium has you know gotten up on the rise, but mm-hmm. I want Sheamus to be you know main event stuff. Well, like yeah, he he's awesome. So <laughs> I okay, that's my little two cents there. But well, and it I, was amazing. I think this match because the official title of this match was a good old fashioned Donnybrook match. <laughs> and when I saw like bars set up the around the ring, barrels. there was a picture of what was supposed to be Seamus's great, great grandfather, but no. it was literally just him, super, his face superimposed on an old man's no. face. Like they, I didn't know they that. showed it just for half a second. <laughs> And you heard Michael Cole say that explanation. To, oh, I'm like, of course. Oh, my God, y'all. <laughs> like, is this going to be, like, am I going to hate this? Like, are you going to really make oh, me hate this no. match? Because under the Vince era, this would have been riddled with stereotypes. Uh, hoity-toity, and I'm Irish. I'm Irish, and I wear a tiny hat. <laughs> right? And, I, and we are from, like... The, you're from Eastern Europe and we really like rules. You know, like it's it's all these things like, I don't know, like during the Vince era, that would have been a thing. Yeah, Like Seamus was involved in a storyline with Jeff Hardy about alcohol. It, yeah. Right. And it was, did not mm. go well, seeing as how we see where Jeff is now. Yeah. Like it, but that's the type of stuff that he would do. Absolutely. And, but with this new era of Triple H, it was just a brawl. Like, just like a bar fight brawl. They used the stuff outside, kind of. Like, barely. But it was just a, like, no rules, like, no holds barred kind of match. I don't think they really even needed to call it the Brook match. No, I'm wondering if that was, like, a shout-out for something for Sheamus, but, I mean... Well, yeah, because that's... It's an, I don't know if that's an Irish thing well, or... Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, but I just, like, I don't know where he specifically is from. Because, um, I mean, I know, like, a lot of wrestlers change where their actual location is because, you know, oh, well, people don't know where that is. Well, sure. So yeah. I'm not I'm not quite sure if he's, like... But if he's in that area, like, I bet that actually is, like, somewhere, like, he knew and, and loved or well, something sure, like that. Well, sure, but... but um, I, I see what you mean. Like, it doesn't need to be that specific. It didn't. But it's okay because it was a great <laughs> match. No, it was great, and I feel like I didn't really care who won. I just, this was like, you know, and listeners, you know, that's my favorite type of match. I just love to see people beat the shit out of each other. (laughs) Like, it's just, it's satisfying to me. getting a bitten. Like, exactly. (laughs) A full bitten. So, I just, I feel like everybody got a chance 
to really showcase themselves in this match. But then you got to see what everybody really wanted to see, which was just Sheamus and Gunter just beating the shit out of each other. Oh, the chops that they gave each other. Oh, my God. I mean, two minutes in and Sheamus' chest was Sheamus' chest hadn't recovered from two nights prior. No, he was right? already so bruised. Because they had a another match for the Intercontinental title oh. on SmackDown. So really, it wasn't even 24 hours because it no. was sun- Saturday that the pay-per-view was oh. on. And Friday was when they had the oh. match. And so his chest was still red. I hope that I hope that he got a good ice bath after that. <laughs> like One could oof, hope. Oof. But I think definitely go back and watch this one. I, yes. can't, I can't remember the exact finish of this, but... Uh, shillelagh was involved. His shillelagh. Oh, oh, that was one of the things I did want to bring up. I just love so, that shillelagh because like shillelagh law, I just think that's fantastic. There were shillelaghs that were involved in the match, yes. right? And But Imperium used yes. a shillelagh to win. And I, do, I just feel like that's interesting and I'm still processing whether I like it or not because... Well, they tried to do it to win. No, but they did win, though, right? No, they didn't. Sorry. No, just no, no. Kidding. They won the. They won the episode. The like they had had a brawl before that, and they used the shillelagh. So this That's is right. the one where he gets his redemption. He's like, Nah, I'm gonna take it back, and he just went bam. Fair. Okay. So, but I still don't know if I like them using it or not because I think it's kind of huge. They are <laughs> all about rules, though. I know it's kind and of. And the fun. mat is sacred, and we don't we play by the rules. We don't break the rules. But right? only if it's everybody else but us question mark and when i say i don't like it i think like i kind of do my conscious doesn't like <laughs> it like my wrestling brain yes. loves it like the psychology of it mwah, love it shelby's but, a rule follower no never my cap record is showing i know i'm sorry <laughs> but this girl don't even jaywalk <laughs> i don't i don't jaywalking actually stresses me out but that's that's for another podcast anyway so i think the Brawling Brutes go over, and they win, which I do think it was the right move since Absolutely. Sheamus did lose. Um, so both of them still look, you know, strong. Yeah. Um, nobody really, really loses, quote unquote, no. in this match. I mean, five regals, but for sure. Absolutely. Like it's just, every single match that they do is fun, and it's I legit just, think ugh. that I could watch some iteration of this forever and i'd be i'd be all right absolutely they could brawl for the rest of the days and i would never get tired of it well and i think that it's good that we had this match because then when we go into the next one kind of gave us a little bit extra padding because we had this was for the smackdown women's champion it was uh ronda rousey versus Liv morgan and i don't i just i i hate this for Liv. I do too. I really do because I feel like she, I, th- she has had no direction, none really, and except the cr- I cry. The crowd kind of turned on her a little bit because of the the accident. Wonk- yeah. Well, the wonky finish. Yeah. With their first match mm-hmm. that they had, when she defended the title, which then I thought was hilarious because at the very end, you know, at the very end they're all still booing Ronda. So okay. Here's the thing, That's though. what I don't get. Yeah, because honestly, there was really nothing interesting about this match. No, like, so there the, were a lot of bumps. It was awkward, it clunky. Was, it, it was bad. It was not like, good. Th- there were so many botches in this match. Like, there was the finish itself, I felt like, was one big botch. What did, so, what even happened? So you had, so the setup for the for the finish was you had Liv sen- doing a senton on Ronda through the table, which has been her, like, I'm extreme. I go. <laughs> I do send times their tables. Like, and Rhonda's like, okay, cool, bitch. Like, I am MMA. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you be your little form of That's extreme cute, over sweetheart. here. That's really cute. But I'm going to, you know, be over here smoking my cigarette and, like, you know, knocking when bitches I was out. A kid. So she does that off of the, off the top rope. Mm-hmm. Rhonda goes clean through the table. Really good spot. Could have ended it there. Like, that's it. Um, But she kicks out. And I'm like, okay, well, that's Liv has basically, like, shot her load at this point. Like, there's (laughs) nothing else. Like, (laughs) nothing else for her to do at this point. Um. (laughs) Um, So then she gets the idea to pick Rhonda up to powerbomb her through the broken table. 
emphasis on the like broken. It's broken. It's, it's broken. broken already. <laughs> like <laughs> it's broken. It's broken. Like <laughs> we hold up our hands. It's broken. There's nothing there. Like she legit picks her up to power bomb her <laughs> through the broken table. And then she. And I, I literally am screaming that at the TV. It's broken. Like, it's broken already. Like, <laughs> it how did it fix itself? It's still on the ground. <laughs> There's no more damage to be done. <laughs> and, but she Except doesn't. to your pride. She doesn't really do it, though. No, like, she can't really she get her up. She couldn't lift her. She can't really get her up. And then she just kind of lays her oh, on the table. And so I'm like, awkward. oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. And then oh, no, Rhonda no, no, no. locks in. <laughs> what? Court Graves calls a bicep crusher. <laughs> and ignorant she, slut. She passes out <laughs> to a bicep crusher. <laughs> I laughed real hard. <laughs> so uh, but she puts her in and both both of them are trying so hard to make this hold look convincing, right? <laughs> both of them are just trying like like Liv is legit standing on her head. Like Rhonda it's can't just, lift her either. Oh, like it's just it's bad. Like it it's is. so bad. And then it she was a shit show. Liv passes out with a creepy ass smile on her face, and and then Rhonda That's wins. It. Rhonda wins, and I'm just like, <sighs> so. I mean, I kind of knew that Rhonda was gonna win because there's really nothing for Liv to be doing right now. Absolutely. And so they have basically they just kind of have to kill her off, and she'll just respawn back at go and just you know start over again. Yeah. But, I mean. There are rumors that she could be involved with the Wyatt That's Six, what I was possibly, thinking. Exactly. Which I'm like, yeah. okay, that'd be fine because she can go back to her Riot Squad gimmick. Yep. And kind of go Harley with the Quinn. Harley Quinn yep. kind of deal. Which I'd be fine with that. But I just, I feel bad because like her run as champion was just not that great. Like the build up to that was so insane. And it doesn't make sense how one thing just made everybody switch so fast. Yeah, it's well because there were people you you were talking about people booing Rhonda. Yeah, so as soon as she won, they all like were because she beat the tar out of it. Sounded mixed to me. Yeah. So I again was still with WWE. Don't know what's real and what's not when it comes to crowd reactions. Question mark. Um, Because sometimes I feel like I hear the piped in. I don't know if I'm just conditioned to hear the piped in (laughs) crowd now or what, but. Ooh, um, Vince is still controlling our minds. He's like up in the rafters, Ooh. like with a soundboard, like just <laughs> pushing with all his might. Vince, we told you to get down from there. <laughs> Never! Exactly. <laughs> but I, it sounded to me like there really, there were some boos, but not everybody was booing her. And she literally looks at the crowd and is like, well, fuck all y'all too. <laughs> you know, and is like yelling at the crowd. I'm like, girl, you won. <laughs> Like, the crowd was not against you at the yeah. beginning of this match. Like, why are you... It, it, it's weird. She has really weird psychology. I, I don't think she has any. Which is weird. And that <laughs> she's just projecting. Well, it's just weird. It, yeah. Well, and... Because she has her own psychology. <laughs> well, and she has said in interviews that the crowd pisses her off all the time. And I'm like, cool. That's great to say out loud at a press conference where fans are watching. <laughs> also, like, what do you think MMA fans do? Like, what's the difference? Like, why? Well, it, I don't think, I mean, mm. MMA fans are not as vocal as wrestling fans are. Like, wrestling, yeah. you get involved in their personal lives and their story yeah. life. But, like, MMA, like, they don't really do much of that. Yeah. Which is why a lot of well, MMA people come over to WWE or just wrestling in general because there's more... <coughs> Excuse me. There's more of an interaction with yeah. stuff. Well, <laughs> the matches also are longer. They're not like 10 second matches. Well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, we gave this one a three. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's a, that's a kind of generous. Polite. But I, I could go two and a half. Yeah. I, I'm thinking more two and a half just because there were way too many botches. Two and a half regals it is. Yeah. <laughs> we, need a, we need a gavel like he has. Dun, dun. <laughs> T- two and a half regals. Two it and is. a half regals. It is. <laughs> well, our next Huzzah. our next match is Karrion Cross versus Drew McIntyre in a oh. strap match. Ooh. Gina was very excited <laughs> for this match. Y'all. I don't know if it was just Drew McIntyre and Karrion Cross, yes. or if it, there was a strap involved. Yes. I don't know why we were so excited <laughs> about this one, but it was good. 
It was I, good. Strap matches are fun. It, it is. Um, but I also just loved the psychology in the beginning of this match. Like, the fact oh, that yeah. Cross was just like, nah, bitch. I'm not going to put it on. Make me. Like, the whole, like... <laughs> he just would pick it up and he would throw it. Throw it. Like, a, it reminded me go of a cat. Get it. Like, go get it, bitch. Like, it reminded me of a cat. <laughs> it is. Like, a cat just, like, <laughs> like making eye contact like, with you and just hitting your purse off. <laughs> like, that type of thing. Watch me. Watch me do it. Don't, like it's don't, gone. don't like you do, do it. it. Oh, no, it's already gone. <laughs> um, but I, I really was excited for this match. But that's also just because they're both great wrestlers. And now at, combining their stories together is really fun. Like, yeah. I, I'm excited to see this. Like, this I'm excited fun. to see Karrion Cross as he's in, as he was intended. There. Right? There it is. So we had the, the awful version of him when he first got called up. Which Remember that helmet? We, uh, <laughs> that, mm. <laughs> you good? You felt dry heave. No, I also <laughs> I just remembered that he went to Raw with the NXT title and was pinned by Jeff Hardy. I just remembered that and oh I gagged. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. That was when we just knew shit was going oh. downhill with NXT. We we're like, great, cool. There okay. it is. Okay, bye. Um, but, but yeah, so I just, I'm happy that he, he is with Scarlet. He is doing his original gimmick that he just, it was basically a labor of love in NXT with the entrance and the look oh, and just, just the, so, uh, speaking of looks, can we talk about Scarlet the looker girl? She had no clothes on. Holy <laughs> moly. If she, she went any <laughs> higher with that slit, she would have showed side cleavage on top of the already cleavage <laughs> on top of the whole booty out. I was like, girlfriend, what you got? Like banana peel on at this point? Like what? <laughs> like it looks like, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. It's like in different sections. And then like, I was like, Whoa. See, also... <laughs> I hey, if like, you if you want to wear that, if you are confident oh, and you no, want to rock fine. that, and they approve it, that's fine. But I would just feel because she like, bent over so many times. My question was like, like how do you pee? Like, <laughs> there's a zipper down the back. Okay, but you know for a fact that would have taken ten minutes to get in and out of just I mean, to pull it down to pee. I mean that that's just what you do, <laughs> I guess. I mean, you romper worn, life. Oh, you've worn jumpsuits <laughs> and rompers before. You know what to do. <laughs> so. Also, you just don't drink anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> you just don't pee. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Just every time she would like lean against the the um, the the ring, I would just be like, "Oh God, please don't have anybody look at her." <laughs> or also, <laughs> like, like, please don't rip. Like, yeah. it's like thick, like no, or it was thin. Um, like, oh gosh. It, I mean, it was it was fabulous. It was it was amazing. great. Um, I, I would never wear that. Oh no! But it was it was great. Um, I do feel like they are leaning away from his original, like, mystic kind of character. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I do either. I don't. I feel think like. I, especially it's Scarlet. Because Scarlet's whole thing was she was, like, the one that, like, no, this woman has magic. She controlled him. And now I'm, like, worried. There would be times where she, he would be losing. Absolutely. He would roll out to the side. She would whisper something into his ear. And then, and then he'd, he'd be possessed he'd, and come he'd back. He'd roll back in like Bane, who just got a yes. supercharge or something, and just, like, completely demolish everyone. And so I'm, I'm, I, I'm nervous, and this is not what I was expecting from this match. This is not what I thought I would mm-hmm. be taking away from this. I just... I'm I'm scared. I don't like being scared. I trust Triple H. <laughs> I just well the reason why it's obvious that the magic is being pulled away is that within the match, y'all they they were beating the tar out of each other with this like just oh God. whipping the mess out. I mean the welts on them now I'm sure are oh I could only imagine. I mean even toward the end of the match I like mean, Drew was, especially. Oh. I mean Carrion has a lot of tattoos on his back so yeah. you couldn't really see it but as Drew well but was Drew just, doesn't have ugh. any so you could just see the whelps like, just forming already. There, there was no holding back whatsoever like it was it, it was full like power attacks of just whipping the shit out of each other well I mean yeah there would be like a whole like minute un, uninterrupted of, of just, just whipping going each, other. each other yeah also I guess we'll talk about this near the end but kink, kink stuff <laughs> 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 
is this a lot of there's a lot of things going on here and we'll we'll delve more into that, that comes later up in the it, judgment day a lot a lot yes <laughs> a lot um but right near the end after um after they've been beating the tar out of each other you know just whipping each other with this belt um finally drew's about to go and and just wail on him again and scarlet interrupts yeah she stands up and this is the time when like uh, i know it doesn't work like it, it and it has it for her and i get that but that would have been the time when she did the fireball but the fireball wasn't working and i get it mm-hmm. but i just pepper spray I don't yeah, I don't like that. That it, makes me sketched. I'm not a fan. Like Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the pepper spray either and I also felt like that could have been missed. It yes. that could have been literally like um freaking like powder that then like it, like there's so many other options yeah. that were available for that and I was disappointed with pepper spray and I was completely out of it. Well, pepper spray kind of makes it like I am a girl walking alone downtown by myself. It's coming from the club. Someone is coming up behind me and I'm just yes. going to empty this entire canister of pepper spray. Which, by the way, unintentionally got in her own husband's eyes oh, I know. because she sprayed it so much. She did, and she also did what you... Now, not that I have ever had to do this, thankfully. No, thank God. But I have been We, we taught, are trained. <laughs> I've been taught that if you do have to use pepper spray you do what she did yes which was like spray it all in his vicinity or whoever's yes. vicinity and so that way whoever is attacking you has wherever they go wherever they walk they are walking through it yes well she did that <laughs> which is good which is good that means that and she's obviously trained in how to do that in a life-threatening emergency she's she's what's up but in a stage situation i don't feel like they should have used real pepper spray there's that you could have done you could have put something in the pepper spray canister or it even something just water that was just like a sleeve that made it Absolutely. look like pepper spray on the outside and then when you sprayed it it was a mist yeah. And it looked like pepper spray, but it was like water with some like oil in it or something. I mean, we, you, know? you could have used the Bath and Body Works broom spray for all you care. Dude. Like nobody would have, and then it would have smelled nice too. Like, I mean. Eucalyptus, <laughs> like we're all calming down. <laughs> just, Eucalyptus spearmint, yes. It just, but it, I, yeah. yeah, I'm nervous. I don't like it. This is one of the first moments. And it, I put two options when I was coming up with my regals for this because the pepper spray affected me so bad. And I yeah. don't, I, I know this is a weird hill to die on for me, but it, it threw me and I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. So I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch, <laughs> but it just makes me feel like they're taking away the full magic effect that they were. Well, and I'm I, nervous. Yeah, I feel like the, it, it loosened, not loosened. It, um, it affected the end of the match for sure. Yeah. And it made it less of a match to me. Because it did kind of take you out of it. Because you're like, oh, okay. So everything that we just did for the past, like, 20 minutes could have not happened because you had pepper spray the yeah, whole time. Yes. Like, why did you not jump in five minutes into him wailing on him for the first time to, and sprayed him then? Or start of the match. Spray the mess out of him then and then just go ahead and take it. Like, if yeah, you're but, really heels. But then the match has to happen, Gina. Well, no, but then they would just beat the tar out of him. No, I know. But, yeah. No, I. It, it's kind of like the analogy of, like, like, when you're on a ski lift, you know, they teach you to keep your legs up when mm-hmm. you're dismounting. So that, that way, when the lift finally goes, you put your feet down and you just go. So... If you don't and your feet are down, you kind of, and your face hits the ground. Mm -hmm. It's not the hardest place of all to fall, but it's still disorienting. Sure. And that's how I felt that that pepper spray was. (laughs) Like you're on the lift, you're fine. One of your legs gets down. You're like, oh wait, oh snap, bam. I love that analogy. Thanks. That's that's probably the best one I've ever heard you say. You've had some doozies, but that Welcome one was pretty good. Welcome to the good. deep dark recesses of my mind. <laughs> That's just ADD brain right there, baby. Wee! <laughs> I love it. But it works, though. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I would say this is probably a three and a half. Yeah. Just because it, it, the ending, and honestly, it is how you leave it. Right? Like, if that ending didn't happen, I would say a four. Yeah, absolutely. But and if, that's, that's what I was ugh, yeah. upset about. 
that's all right. Yeah. No, but the match that they had, the wrestling that happened within the belt, all of that, great work. And they, they did a really great. good job with the belt because I yes. feel like sometimes when you have strap matches, it it's can, very easy to get tangled up yeah. in the belt. And they did a really good job. There was with psychology that. with the belt too because mm-hmm. um, they kept mentioning on the announce table that Drew had an injury in his shoulder, you know, from a prior event. And so Karrion Cross used that. He then would use the belt to pull Drew and Drew would slam into the ring posts and he would then continue to hurt his shoulders. So the ring psychology was there, liked it, just not a fan of the pepper spray. Yeah. So, well, uh, the next match was for the raw women's championship, which, well, sorry, just kidding. Not yet. Not yet. Flipped. You had edge versus Finn Balor. Oh yes. So, Oh, man. <laughs> this match was great, This y'all. match was something. I really I, liked it. I... <laughs> it was long. I, okay. But I'm not saying that in a bad way. So I could have done without the, like, first 15 minutes yes, of this match. absolutely. If we could have just had it be... I don't know. We already had an Extreme Rules match yeah. with Liv and Ronda, so we couldn't have another one of those. I mean, but just you just kind of be but. like a no holds barred or something. Yeah. Not. I hate I quit matches. I I just I I don't like them. There's because most of the time, all that you're doing is watching a regular wrestling match with an occasional ref walking up to them. Eating the mic with a microphone, <laughs> being like, "Do you quit? Like, Do you quit?" The best right? one though like, was that he did that within the first move set where he like got him in the hold, and he goes, "Do you quit?" And it's like, "Bitch, it's been a minute." Like, what no, been, of what, course not. What would have been hilarious <laughs> is, is if he goes up to him after the, he's like in the first hold, not even like two seconds into the first <laughs> hold, he has the microphone at his face, being like, "Do you quit?" What if he would just look at him and go? Yeah, yeah, this is uncomfortable. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, done. But we have to have the match. Oh, I know, I know. But <laughs> no, but that would have been really just, funny. I just thought it was so funny. I'm like, no, dude. Like, what did you expect like, him to say? Like, it's two seconds into the match. <laughs> no, he's not going to quit yet. Oh, my gosh. So, Could you imagine, like, if Brock Lesnar ever did an I quit match? That's exactly what it would be. Oh, God. Because <laughs> he doesn't work by the hour. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So... We just basically the first 15 minutes of this was just them brawling around the ring or around the arena, really. Um, and there were some good spots. Like there was a good spot at the top of the concourse where yeah. Edge basically lifted Finn up and Finn did a spot where he hit his face on the concrete. Oh, overhang, I forgot about that. Which that was pretty cool. Um, so there were some cool spots, but again, I just can't get over the like heavy breathing into the, the microphone. Panting. It's like <laughs> no, and then the you know grunting. <laughs> that, like, like it was, it, it was. I already don't like ASMR, so like <laughs> it's it's just it's it was rough for me. It 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 lent itself to <laughs> you know certain <laughs> ideas, and it was a little awkward hearing, especially like deep guttural yeah. like grunts yeah got a little sexual uh, yeah yeah just, just hey, with- you guys uh, you remember when we watched money plane <laughs> <laughs> there were definitely some money plane eyes oh, by the end of this match the bug eyes oh, were real God. <laughs> oh david you nailed it oh i love it listeners oh. i wish you could see david has the perfect edge money plane impression it's that right now. mixed with the um the prairie dog <laughs> Do you remember that prairie? Do- yes, exactly. that's exactly, exactly what it is. <laughs> but yeah, so if I could have done without the first 15 minutes oh, of yeah. the heavy breathing and the grunting, I'd been all right with it. Like as soon as they went out into the crowd, I was like, all right, this can't be Orton and Edge again. Like I got I, y'all, <laughs> oh, like Lord. I'm already dozing and that's just because I'm an old maid now. Sure. So come on now. Um, however. But, but I do feel it, like once we got into the... Um, in, back into the ring and of course we have judgment day come out <laughs> even though they said they wouldn't oh, they're, they're liars. Bad guys. <laughs> so you had the rest of them come out and it's like you know he's outnumbered <gasps> and then i i oh, like yeah. i say i say like very quietly i'm like is beth gonna be here <laughs> is beth gonna be here 
Like I feel like this is this is it. I feel like this is the time when Beth is going to come. Like it's a pay per view, and he, you know, she. They said they mentioned her on commentary like earlier. <laughs> like I feel like Beth is coming, and then she comes out of nowhere. I'm like, yes! I said it. <laughs> like I was, I called Muppet it. Muppet arms. I called it on this one. I was like, nope, she has to come. She's because Rhea's out here, man. and they've been teasing this forever. Um, man, Beth is awesome. And so, I mean, you had you had all these different components to it. I mean, it was basically like a 30 minute soap opera episode. Essentially, it was you had, beautiful. You know, Dominic or uh, Ray Mysterio coming out to help. You had Dominic coming out and getting his comeuppance. He you know, beat, he beat his own dad. Well, he did. Okay, yeah, that shot was pretty brutal. Yeah, that was. Yeah. And then you had Michael. Good job, Michael He's... Cole, just screaming at him on commentary, <laughs> like, "Oh my god, I forgot about Jesus. that." Jesus, he was mad. Like, honestly, I'm kind of sad that like he's not on. Monday Night Raw to continue this storyline oh. because like it was like I was gonna I was guttural. gonna ask if we were gonna talk about the switch up that was just announced with oh, that but yeah. we'll do that later but um, like he was just like yelling how <laughs> dare you how <laughs> dare you hit your father that's your father <laughs> there, there's some daddy issues coming out there so <laughs> well and then you had had Rhea come out and then Beth come out and then they brawled for a little bit and she's like this is what you wanted bitch like you know they <laughs> They were super into it. The crowd was super into it. I and mean, then you had uh, Beth get knocked out mm-hmm. by Rhea with the chair. Mm-hmm. And then they just work over Edge for a little bit. And then we, you had... I did like the spot where they had the coup de gras in tandem with one another. Oh, what so, was that word, Shelby? Yeah, I'm sorry. Multiple, what? multiple coup de gras is coup de gras. No, no, you're correct. <laughs> I know. I'm not getting on you for that. I, I felt attacked. No. <laughs> Michael Cole verbatim said, y'all, oh, coup de gras. Yeah. Uh-huh. Corey Graves, the ultimate ignorant slut, heard this and on purpose said it wrong. You cannot convince me otherwise. It was literally two seconds later. Ver- he, within. He does a coup de gras, hits edge, goes back up to the top rope like a monkey, <laughs> And then jumps back again, right? Like, like literally back to back coup de gras. Yeah. It, okay. Can we can we clear that up? Because I, I, I don't know. Is it coup, coup de gras is one. Coup de gras I, is two. Or is it just like fish? And, it's, <laughs> and there's no plural. I, I'm I, spelling it. You're coup. both wrong. It's coup de graces. Oh my god. I don't. The ignorant uh, slut for the episode, dude. Y- you know what? <laughs> don't tempt me. I hadn't picked mine yet. I might. Mm. Producer okay. David. <laughs> Oh, and look, there's a pronunciation. Uh, I'm not going to play it on here. No. But I'm trying to find. Okay. I'm just, I was just curious because I thought you guys were ganging up on me because no, no, I no, no, said no, no. it I'm wrong. so sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to do pluralization. But, um, but so continue. Sorry. They do that, and, which I thought was a really cool sequence. I'd never seen him do multiple in like consecutive fashion. Um, and then they're like, okay, this is your last chance. You know, you gotta say it now, or we're gonna we're gonna hit Beth with the chair. We're gonna <gasps> do the edu- is it education? I think that's the move where you have someone who's laying on a on a chair, and then you hit them with another chair. Um, and so they're like, "Hey, we're gonna do it. We're gonna, you, you better say I quit right now, or we're gonna do it. We're gonna beat her up." And then Rhea has the chair up, and she's about to do it. And he goes, I, uh, uh, "I quit. I quit. I quit. I, I quit." And then they look back at him and they're like, did he turn into Borat for a second? (laughs) (laughs) I quit. (laughs) I quit. If you listen back, that is how he sounded. It's uh, pretty accurate. So they look back at him. Rhea still has the chair up. And I can't remember what she says to him. Oh, but she said something, boss. Yeah, it was basically to the effect of like, you know, we're going to do it anyway. (laughs) And and then hits her with the chair. Oh, man. And then Edge said, my wife. (laughs) Pretty much. Oh, so it 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 was so it was so good. Like it was so good, and you you kind of like after he said I quit, you just kind of were yelling at the TV like hit her anyway. You yeah. know, like do it. Your heels, like just hit her anyway. Bad guys. And then they did it. You're like yay! <laughs> oh no, they hit her. <laughs> so, um, coups de gras. That's the plural. Coup. Like as in like there's multiple coup. Like like it's a coups. Like coups de gras. Coups de gras. So, because okay. coup is one, but coups de gras. The gras is still the same. Okay. So. 
That's no, it's important to know. It is important. It Etymology is important. Is important. Um, also, I love to find more ways to s- shit on <laughs> ignorant I mean, slut. It was just, it, it was intentional. Blatant. Blatant. It was Blatant. It was intentional. Like, I thought it was me being like, just, you know, being pissy about it. Oh, but no. No. Because I watched it, you know, al- alone and I was, and I heard it and I was like, <gasps> no. <gasps> How dare you? Like, it is clearly a choice. <laughs> I think he's listening to us and speaking. Doing it just out of spite. Just I wouldn't spite be us. surprised. He he is very has a very heavy Twitter presence, so I mm. wouldn't be surprised. I heard it and I started laughing because I knew <laughs> you were gonna hate it. <laughs> you know what he meant? You know what? I don't have it on my list, but I might write his name on there. Yeah, at least, really least honorable mention. I've never given it to one of my own people. <laughs> I feel like that's a little intense. Oh God! I mean, this match was great yeah i mean i gave it a four it's like a it was four. fun <laughs> like it was really fun all the heavy breathing and grunting aside <laughs> minus the weird level of sexual noises yeah no i mm. mean all of the other like innuendo stuff was fun oh yeah like i mean and it is clear like how hilarious like dominatrix kind of feel like mm-hmm. Rhea is for dom which which that's a great that's so good that's it's so funny hilarious. it's so funny i don't think it's lost on anyone either. not at all <laughs> like i mean the guy now gets who's your who's your daddy chance whenever him and Rhea are in the in the ring and i think he, during raw on the lead up to extreme rules he that happened and he looks around and then looks at her <laughs> We all know who my daddy is. <laughs> and then just keeps going with the promo. I'm like, okay, okay, Dom. Good job, kid. Okay. Good job. You're learning. <laughs> so this, then we have our semi-main now because we've uh, – this is the one that I thought we had before, but now it's now. It's now. <laughs> Words. <laughs> what am I talking about? It's okay. We're, <laughs> we're losing it, y'all. It's I fine. Said, I just said the match that now is now. <laughs> Do you guys remember when we first tried this and I forgot the name of which show we were about to do? <laughs> yeah, oh, listeners. Oh, we, I um, hope we can find a way to edit that in. We had a fun time at the beginning of this match because David legit forgot the name of our podcast because that's how long it's been since he produced our show. And look, I have foolishly <laughs> agreed to produce. This is a work. This is a takeover. And this is a rewind. I was like, which this is a, are we doing tonight? <laughs> and I said, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> This is a. What is this show? Wait, who is this? <laughs> what am I doing? I Where think am I? I just need to retitle Long Walk Talks to This is a Long Walk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still have one show. We can just keep that one the way it is. You just have Teeny Talks. That still counts, too. This is a, this is a Teeny Talk. Yeah, Katie and this I haven't done one of those talk. in over a year, but yeah. Aww. Whenever you come back. <laughs> so we have our semi main, which is the Raw Women's Championship match between Bianca Belair and. And Bailey. Woohoo! So I thought it, I, I had mixed feelings about this match. Okay. Because the whole stipulation was that not, neither one of their teams were allowed ringside. Mm-hmm. Right? So you had, I mean, Alexa Bliss and Asuka were basically taken out yeah. on the last episode. Like they're Raw. gonzo. But damage control, or as how I've heard some people call it, damage control. Because Ooh. there's no O in it. <laughs> so, control. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said something else. I'm so sorry. Why would I say That's that? That's why I stared at you like that. I'm sorry. No. Continue. What? Cunt? Nah. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> I deserve that. I walked right into you it. Did. I was like, Gina, uh, he's going to say it. You know who our producer is. So, I've, I've, I don't know. Like, with them coming out during this match i don't mind interference i just feel like it's an easy yeah trade that everybody does yes right like this is a thing that we've been talking about with AEW for a while is that all of their matches some of them on the same card all have the same finish back or to they, back to back or they all have interference in a certain in some way like yes there's, so to me i like bianca Mm-hmm. And I think she is very strong. Yes. And I think she is a good champion. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know what else there is about her other than that. Okay. So, I don't know. It's hard to explain because you, and then, but the same goes with damage control. Yeah. Because they have lost a lot mm-hmm. since debuting. Yeah. Like, when they lost 
um, to or they lost the tag team titles. Yeah, the first time when Raquel and Aaliyah won it. Mm. I mean, all of their momentum just got shot. It was, yeah. They should have won it there. And I honestly feel that Bailey should have won this because not that I feel like she, that Bianca doesn't need it. I don't think she needs a title anymore. Not, and I hate to admit and that, but yeah, that she's I feel ready like, to fly. Yeah, but also I think Bailey needs the title to make damage control more of a threat. Yeah. Right? Because now Bianca has now beaten all three of them in this match. Yeah. Because they have a great match. It's beautiful. To set up this. They have a lot of good ladder spots, a lot of spots that I wasn't expecting them to do. And my goodness, they actually ran up the ladder. Yes. They actually. Like had some like nothing, pep in their step. Like I hate watching ladder matches and they're like <laughs> like they're 900 years old reaching for the top and like oh my gosh that drives me mad i hate it i hate yeah. it i hate it yeah so i i was so glad but that means they're also in sync their timing's good mm-hmm. they're able to get up they're getting to their spots on time you know that's good effective teamwork even if they're not on the same team you know what i mean well and and both of them i think are good workers absolutely enough that you put them with anyone and they're going to have a good match. They've yes. all, both of them have always been that way. So I'm, I, I don't have any gripe with the match. No. I felt like the match itself was great. I just... It was I, predictable? I, well, yes. Yeah. Because damage control has run interference this entire time. Yeah. So I kind of wished for the pay-per-view that if Bianca was going to win, that she would have won outright. No questions asked. Didn't have to go through any adversity whatsoever. Like, it was just her and Bailey, and she just got the better of Bailey. Like, you know? I kind of watched this match. The interference happened, but then she took care of him so easily. It's like, like you can even move on from it, and you're like, oh, well, then it should have just been them. So, yeah, that, that was also another thing that I noticed was that interference happened about... 15 minutes into this match 10 15 minutes in, and then it was it that was after a lot of heavy spots a lot of very hard hitting spots and then she just picks both of them up and does her her finisher on them the kod yeah right where she has to put them on her shoulders and then thrust them forward yeah and make them land on their face in Uh, front of her yeah right so she does it to both Dakota and Io at the same time. She gets both of them on her shoulders. Now, granted, they both don't weigh anything. Yes. But, that but that's combined. still coordination. Mm-hmm. Getting them in a spot continually and safely. Yeah, so then it's just like, oh, okay. So she's just going to run through them and and win this match. Now, the finish was gnarly. It was nasty. Like, you had Bailey go to the, to the corner and pick up a piece of ladder that she had wedged in the corner. Yeah. Which definitely stayed longer than Liv's chair did when she tried to do that spot. I did forget to say that part. That was funny. (laughs) Liv puts, poor thing, sets up a chair to put Rhonda through it in the corner. And without her her even touching it, it it just just falls to the floor. (laughs) And you can just see her being just so defeated. (laughs) Like, all right, well, I guess I'll just do the move regularly, I guess. Oh, my gosh. But Bailey goes to get the the piece of ladder to, like, fix it so that way she can, you know, throw Bianca through it. She has it in her hands. Bianca comes up behind her, gets her in position for the KOD. Bailey still has the ladder in her hand. And then she does the KOD on top of the ladder. Oh, See, and brutal. then there was another spot <laughs> where Bailey took out part of her knee brace. Oh, God. To yeah. start to beat the tar out of her. Like, I feel like that hurts <gasps> you more than anything Absolutely. else, baby, right? Like, 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 your knee. You need that. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> but no, um, I I see what you're saying. Yeah. But I also, I wrote down in my notes, like, I enjoy seeing a woman be strong, but not, like, full, like, quote, monster strong. Like, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying seeing, like, she's strong with agility, with, with just sheer strength. But, yeah. like, in other aspects as well, like... But I, 
I can I can agree that okay and well now what yeah like she's run through all of damage control she really doesn't need Alexa and Asuka anymore yeah right because she beat them beat all three of them basically. can't really get back with Becky and like well, go back with Becky's that. out right now I know but like you know that would have been like oh well we'll do it again like kind of thing well but- I, and I think they're she's face now she turned face before she left Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, at SummerSlam, she turned face after That's their right. match. I forgot about that. So it, when she does come back, then well, the I of, guess her and Bianca team up. I don't know. I really, and I, I don't know. So I just don't know, like, who like who else is there? I know. Like, are we just going to see her and Bailey for a while? I mean. I feel like, you know, maybe they'll, since they allow women to wrestle at Crown Jewel now, like, <laughs> will they you know, have this match again yeah. in Crown Jewel and Bailey wins it there. Like that'd I don't, be interesting. I don't know. I just but, felt like this would have been a really good time for Bailey to win it. Yeah. To establish damage control as the force. Because they would have all of the women's titles. Oh, you know what? Ooh. If that had happened and they had come in and interfered and like that's the reason and then like Bailey like had actually been able to climb up because of their interference mm-hmm. then Bianca could have come back and be like oh well you can't do it without them i held up my end of the bargain like why couldn't you mm. like are you actually that strong are you actually that good as a champion because you had to have someone else help you well yeah which i'm sure that's the direction that they are going to yeah. go in to maybe set up their like that would have been match. but that would have been a perfect time to do it yeah so well I mean, we wrote down a four. It's still a good match. It's still good. It was a good match. Yeah, no. Definitely. Um, so Bianca retains, by the way. Oh, I don't yeah. know if I said that or not. <laughs> Yay! Um, but I, I do love a good ladder match. It's always fun when there, there are no pinfalls or submissions. You just yeah. legit have to crawl up a ladder and pick your title up. <laughs> um, um, I did read an article the other day that I thought was really interesting. I don't know if I talked to you about it. Um, Triple H has mandated that there are no ladders taller than 15 feet anymore for women's matches, which I thought was so interesting. And I was like, well, why? And he goes, he kind of hinted in the statement that he made that he may also be doing this for men's matches as well mm. because of the damage that he took as a as a person Shawn Michaels like other people the Hardys he's like it's not worth it it's just a few more feet like why Mm. like it's the same effect we looking at those ladders we didn't know no like we had no clue like I think that it's important that he's putting the safety first and I liked that and I wanted to share that because (laughs) I it's it's weird like I'm not normally the person that reads articles about you know behind the scenes stuff like manager stuff like normally that's you you were the one who would get notifications on your phone but i don't know with this new era i'm i'm more interested well it's an interesting time to be a wrestling fan yeah because a lot is changing um you know for good or for better yeah or no for good or for worse you know yeah um well we have our main event which was really the precursor to the actual main event that we already (laughs) talked about um (laughs) we have uh Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins Seth in a freaking Rollins fight pit match. Oh my gosh! Now, okay. Oh, feelings. No, I just I fell asleep during this match, <laughs> and I don't know if it was because I've been traveling all day and I was tired, or you, there's I just, there were a lot of outside factors as to why you well, fell asleep. That, but also, I remember watching the fight pit matches that they did in NXT. Yes, because Matt Riddle has already done two of these and. Right. That's the chiclet match with Timothy Thatcher. Yes. With Toothless Timmy. Toothless Timmy. Oh, Toothless Timmy. And <laughs> so you had him versus Timothy Thatcher. And then you had, um, no, sorry. It was Thatcher versus Champa. Champa. And then and Riddle, Riddle versus and then Chomp. Thatcher. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Thatcher. Anyway, this has already been done twice on NXT. Yes. So I kind of already knew what the stipulations were. And yes, there were some cool spots in this match. Yeah. He ran up a wall. It was really cool. But but I also think I, I just, I, I knew that Bray was coming. Yeah. Right? Like, I knew, I knew that something was going to happen at the end of this match. Yeah. So I really didn't pay attention. And I, I kind of wish that I would have paid more attention. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, there were definitely some, some good spots in this. Yeah, killer like spots up at the top. 
But the build up <laughs> to this match, I feel like was this great. This is how you have heat in real life and make it work. Yeah, definitely. AEW, are you taking notes? <laughs> are you getting your shit together? Because guys, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Um, this is how you're still professional, still able to work together, even if you don't actually like each other. Like, this is what you do. Yeah. This is how you make a company and a match and just an experience work. Like, yeah, because there's some. They really don't like each other. Intense heat. They on really one another. don't like each other. Yeah. And it took them a while to actually get to this match. Absolutely. Because they hated each other so much. Like, if, you've got to be able to find a line of where the hatred that is real is not going to boil over. And that's what's been the issue with AEW lately. Yeah. Is like you, that they can't separate you can't. reality from what's happening exactly. in the world. Exactly. Yeah. Because a lot of the people that are coming into AEW, that is them. They right. are the personality. They are well, only one person in particular, but you can guess who I'm talking about. Well, there's, um, there's been some other ones that have come out. But since, yes. Um, since what everyone is affectionately calling brawl out instead of all out. Ah, yeah, that's ah, what everybody's calling it now. Ah, 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 I know, it's perfect. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, but there's, good one. there's the, you know, the Andrade, Sammy Guevara thing. And, like, um, you know, um, there's been a bunch of other stuff that Andrade. has kind of come out. So, I do feel like, you know, the spots up on the top level yeah. of the cage. Because, basically, Oh, they was, were nasty. I mean, all of the, the ropes were taken down yeah. for this match. And then they got in the ring, and then the cage came down. Yeah. Um. I actually forgot during the pay-per-view that that was going to happen because during the women's match, they shot a camera up to the... Oh, and you could... And I was oh. like, oh, is there a cage match? <laughs> like, I got... Ex- I was like, what? Oh. Oh, right. yeah. The main event. The fight main pitch. Event. <laughs> yeah. Again, I was not focused on any wrestling. It's I was so just funny. waiting for Bray to it's, come back. It's funny because, like, I, I, I'm excited that Bray was back, but I actually tried to, like, I didn't think about Bray, so it was even more exciting, like, at the end. Yeah. Because I was sitting there with the mentality of, like, man, he is screwing us. Nothing is going to happen, and he's not coming out today. Like, right. Like, it's not happening. So, but that was my mentality I had for a while. But um, there I, was this, oh, sorry. I was right there with you up until the minute yeah. it actually started. Dogs and Kara and Chris were like, all right, is this, is that, are they going to do it? Is it going to happen? I was like, no, nah, man. Like, no, they're not going to do it yeah. tonight. They're just going to keep teasing it. Normally, you and um, I don't see like that I'd, I'd immediately proven wrong yeah but that's because y'all were not deep in wrestling twitter like the rest of us yeah that's like, true like i've been watching analysis videos on this for like a week oh my up gosh to this like i was like nope it's definitely happening yeah uh, so i think that was to my detriment i think because i should probably go back and watch the pay-per-view now knowing that he's coming and when it happens and, yeah but i mean there were definitely some good spots up at the top. Yeah, there um, was a... Very skinny up there. Yes. I didn't realize how skinny it was up there. Yes. Because um, he does the... Oh, oh my God. He, the, so, Seth is down at the at, on the mat, and I don't think this was the original move. I think he was supposed to do the bro Derek, which is his, like, twisty, flippy thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. he decides at the last minute to do a, a senton, yeah. which is just full impact on your butt. Like and he. I kind wonder of, if that would have hurt him more. I don't. I don't know. Like, sorry, him as in Seth. I don't know why he decided at the last minute to not do that move. Yeah. Um. You could kind of tell on his face it was like immediate regret. Like, oh shit, 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 bam. Well, I think because the bro Derek would have had him land on his side. Yeah. Versus on his butt. On his butt and back. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but it was really high up. It, it, and I think that's probably what it was. Like he may have been able to have gone up there like once or twice before, but I don't know if they like practiced. I'm sure they were able to walk it. I think that's probably it. And then like, he was like, not, I'll just make the decision at the time. Well, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna practice, practice moves like jump. that before the pay-per-view. <laughs> like what if you get hurt? Hey, make a jump. <laughs> Crack leg. Yeah. But there was one spot I did want to mention just because it's really funny. So there was a guest referee um, for this match. Yeah, um, Daniel Cormier. So I didn't know anything about him. I, I know he's an M- MMA. Real big MMA guy. Big uh, referee over there. 
Uh, well, he was a fighter for a while. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, he See, was a, I, like I said, I didn't know much about him. He was a big MMA fighter um, for a while, um, and I he was just guest refereeing. Yeah. Um, and I think he may be coming over and to the, WWE. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of like back and forth with that. Some saying yes, some saying no. But mm -hmm. I hope he does because I lost it because Seth being Seth decided mm -hmm. that he was annoyed with um Comier? Yeah, Comier. Cor Cormier. Cormier. Okay, yeah. I wanted I knew there was an eh like sound. Uh-huh. Uh so Cormier was in his way, so he threw him out of the way. Yeah. Cormier does this whole term where he's like, "I'm sorry. Did you just touch me?" He grabs Seth by the collar, throws him up against the fence and is like, "I am not wrestling you." You touch the wrestler. You don't touch me. And I was like, ah! Which, <laughs> like, Seth looked like his soul escaped his body. Well, he did it to Matt, too. Oh, it was so because good. Because Matt tried to, like, kind of brushed up against him, too. He's like, stop touching me, guys. Like, like stop it. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny. I wanted to be like, dude, you're, you're rough. Like, like it's, but it's going to happen. It's interesting because... <laughs> WWE is known for their refs not having a lot of like specific personality. Well, yeah, which they is, just recently got their names back. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, you know, it, it's fascinating to see like that's like, you know, a huge jump from, you know, that's more AEW like Aubrey style. Which like, is, is fun. Yeah, it, it is fun. fun. So it was simple. It wasn't like the whole match. Like he right. wasn't like hamming it up. But I did have a good giggle at that moment just because Seth's face during that was so good. <laughs> he really sold it. It was great. Right. So, I mean, we have a four slash four and a half written down. So. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, like, go back, watch it. Yeah. Um, like, the spots are really, really great. But I also just, I really appreciate this match because of everything else outside of it. Yeah. The, this, is a, this is how you deal with conflict. Yeah. This is how you work healthily, respectfully, and not dangerously like this is this is what you're supposed to do so i i gave it higher credit mm -hmm. probably than what it deserved because it's just really frustrating with everything with aew and i really enjoy aew yeah to to see a comparison where people can still work together even if they don't like each other it's fun to see like a work uh a fight that is worked yes versus like the shoot fighting that we're seeing right yes. now because i think we just are so i'm i know i'm tired of it at this point you are very much like, are. I, like when the whole sammy gravara and, and, and andrade, andrade you literally came to my office and said i don't want to talk about you it you were I like said, I, I, just, I don't care i'm so <laughs> over this shit like i don't i don't care like i just i just want to watch what's on my screen yeah on wednesday nights i don't care about all of the backstage stuff that's going on so i think it is nice now because that was definitely different from the last time that i was speaking into this microphone absolutely i was obsessed with all of the drama that was going on and because now, that was the only one but now it's so encompassing that that's all that you can think about when you're watching the programming is this real is it not is right. it real is it not like and it's not fun anymore there's a there's a line a very delicate is it a scrum is it a scrum <laughs> shout out to david two dogs hayes <laughs> with his favorite word is it a scrum, scrum. um it's scrummy but yeah so it's nice to see a work actually be a work yes right and have it work and uh, but the story development for this match to get where they are mm -hmm. was also really nice. Like, a lot of the other storylines within this, like, especially, like, Liv and Ronda, like, pfft, there was no build-up to this whatsoever. Nothing. Like, don't give a damn. No. But this was a build-up that worked. It was slow, gradual. For, like, a month or so Low now. heat, right? Good crock pot temperature. <laughs> low and slow for low eight and hours. Slow. You know what I mean? Like I it do, works. Yeah. It works. Well, so. and I think it was it was funny because like the Bray Wyatt return just came out of nowhere at the end of this. And match. then it just made that so much higher. Yeah. So I mean, I oh I'm yeah, Bray Wyatt arrived by the way, guys. I'm looking <laughs> at your notes. Oh yes, please, <laughs> guys. She rated Bray Wyatt's return as a six point five. I did. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely which i mean yeah it's 6.5 regals it's it was great it was good i mean overall you have to give it a rating 
Yeah. It's a 6.5. No, it's for great. sure. <laughs> um, I mean, overall, I would say the whole pay-per-view would be be a four. I, I almost think? would say four and a half, but yeah, four. Yeah. Definitely four regals. Yeah. So there's my gavel. Oh, <laughs> who's here? <laughs> my um, gavel. So who is your uh, ignorant slut for the night? <sighs> I had it as runner up as our obvious ignorant slut, but I think the runner up right now is David. <laughs> David's no, but David ignorance. wasn't no. there for Extreme no, Rules. No, he's not going <laughs> to eat. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. No, not the prairie dog. No. no. Not the Monday play eyes. No. Oh, no. <laughs> he's pulling his lids down as far as he can so his eyeballs bulge. Oh, God. Um, yeah. But I, I write out a list every time, and then upon our discussion, I then choose from there. Yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah, I mean... I'm going to just have to say the pepper spray, man. <laughs> just the, the, the pepper the spray. The pepper spray. Yeah. I just, it was just such a letdown. Yeah, but and she just did way too much. It's just, I mean, I mean, Poor like, Drew, if you're going to hurt him, like, I, I get it. Okay. Like, I, I really hope he is, too. And, I mean. Well, it looked like the oh. the referee was out there with water and a towel, like, pretty quickly. It's so. like, okay, but, like, it didn't have to be real. It's like, okay, when, when there's a spot to do the fire hydrant, fire hydrant. Fire, fire extinguisher. extinguisher. Thank you. That's not real. That's not the actual real chemical. Well, it's still cold, though. Oh, well, yeah, no. But yeah. there's a way to make that work without it being the actual chemical. Oh, sure. So, well, now yeah. they do that. They used to not do that. It used to be a real oh, fire no, extinguisher, absolutely. and they get chemical And burns. I'm, I'm really hoping <laughs> I'm really hoping that this was not one of, like, like Drew, Karen, y'all better not be pulling method acting on me. I'm going to be pissed. I really don't want Watch, it to be that intense. Go to WWE Instagram and just see a puffy-eyed Drew McIntyre just frowning at the camera, just being like, mm, oh my you hurt. You hurt my eyeballs. My eyeballs. Can't see. Um, I would, but, I, yeah, my ignorant slut is the pepper spray. I mean, if you're not willing to give it to him, I will. It's Corey Graves. Yeah? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. You can't just blatantly mispronounce <laughs> our word when it was said two seconds before the- you said it. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you, you can't. I know he was mine last time, but, like, no. he's mine again. Can I, can I say the phrase? Yes. Corey Graves is an ignorant slut. <laughs> he cannot pronounce the word coup de gras. He says coup de grass intentionally <laughs> just to spite us. <laughs> There it is. Yes. He is I the hope, ignorant slut. I hope you heard that, Corey Graves, wherever you are. I hope you twitched and it <laughs> sent a jolt up your spine, you ignorant slut. You <laughs> peasant slug. <gasps> Whoa. I will tolerate ignorant slut. I'll even tolerate calling someone a cunt. That word. But, uh, I hate it so much. Did you say peasant slug? I've been how watching did, too much Uno. How dare you bring Tyler Breeze into this? How dare you? I've been watching. I'm sorry, guys. This is from Up, Up, Down, Down Uno. I've been watching a lot of it to get through the work days. You but- know what? I'm, I'm going to tag all of them in yes! this episode feed just so they can hear at an hour and a half in, you say peasant slug. Because he is a peasant. A peasant. A peasant slug. <laughs> An ignorant slut, peasants. I can't. That's I can't. that's the that's the new uh, tongue twister warm up before that you is, do a that show. That is a good one. <laughs> yes. So you know what? Yes, I so. think we can unanimously agree. As much as I, the pepper spray was obnoxious. No, Corey Graves is the ignorant slut. So who, who's your EST? <laughs> do you want me to say it? You, you sing okay. Um, I mean, I'm just. I'm gonna have to say just. The, the crowd's reaction to Bray. Yeah, the pop. Like, the, the multiple different levels of pops that he got. The journey. It was a journey. Yeah, just that whole segment in general. Like, again, I, I know I've said it already, but I do feel like that was the best return I have ever seen. That was... Like, it was... Magical. Yeah, it was planned out perfectly, and the audience reacted to it exactly the way that he wanted them to. Yeah. You know, like... He took them on a journey, and they went up and down, and then at the end, I mean, it was deafening. Yeah. So, so yeah, I would definitely say the, the pop for Bray. Um, it's funny because 
you know, I was expecting going in before I even wrote all of that down, like, because I write, like, three different options. Right. And then, like, after we discuss, I, I, I go from there. But I was expecting to have Bianca as an option because, duh, it's right there. Sure. But I, I couldn't Not even, this time. No. Yeah. But I just really loved the Brutes and mm-hmm. Imperium, but I can't give it to just one person because they all were so cohesively <laughs> gorgeous in that match. Right. I just want to say that that was one of the best openers I've seen in a long time. Yeah, so just that whole match. So just that entire match yeah. in my EST. It's just, it's so good. It's There's nothing wrong. I didn't see any, like, mess-ups, botches, nothing. Mm-hmm. If they were botches, they were so glossed over that it just it just flowed seamlessly it was a great match everybody had a great spot it it was just beautiful I really loved it and it's just fun to see Seamus be baby face now he's a face they're now official faces that's hilarious to me yeah crazy Tasmanian butch (laughs) and then Ridge Holland who can lift two people at once and throw them down let's just pray that he's also one of the people that gets his name back I I think that that was in the works I would like to see that and Piper Niven yeah because Tommaso already has his first name back thank Matt Riddle has his first name back thank god um so maybe that'll be the next wave it'll go back to Pete Dunn and just make us all happy Pete Dunn yes which dogs now calls him Pete (laughs) Dunn because of you I'm sorry. Refresh my memory. Who's Piper Niven? Can I change? Can I change my ignorance? Can I, can I, I, can I, I change my ignorance? See, you left. You left. You said no. We can't do that. But no, no. I was honorable mention. Was, ignorance slut. David Hensley. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Oh man. So, I went for like two months without being able to to do one of these. To so screw now with I us? gotta get it all in now. <laughs> You know, and, and we're so happy you're back, We've David. missed you, David. Thank we you. have. We've you missed asshole. you. Thank you. <laughs> you peasant slug. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, our next pay-per-view is Crown Jewel, which oh. I think will be very interesting because oh. Crown Jewels are always very interesting <laughs> because it's basically whatever the Crown Prince wants to see. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just a curated playlist for him. <laughs> it'll be very interesting to see... Um, what it's going to be like without Vince in charge. Yes. Like, is Triple H going to have the same type of chicanery that happens at Saudi matches, like, which are just glorified Raw episodes, essentially? I definitely think that there's going to have to be some tiptoeing around. Like, Well, yeah, they signed a billion-year contract with them, you know? So it's not like they can get out of it. And because of COVID, it was extended. So Gotta love it. So I'm I'm I know that Dogs and Chris are just so sad that they don't get oh, to cover that one anymore. Broken, just completely devastated. Devastated. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I know that's our next pay per view that we have coming up, which is actually only in like two weeks, are you which serious? is insane. <laughs> yeah, they're just Ooh. really cranking them out now. Um, but David, as you, long as there's not three in the same weekend. No, I don't think we'll have look. that for a while. And I think we were all spent, which is why we took like a year off after yeah. that uh-huh. happened. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, well, next up, uh, coming up next week, we're going to be continuing with my next perfect 10 pick since it's October. I got to <gasps> go with something spooky. I'm keeping up with the 80s after doing RoboCop in oh. September. Uh, we're going to be talking about the OG Ghostbusters. Ooh, oh, nice. Okay, I do love that one. Yes. Great movie. Yeah. And uh, other than that, uh, it's whatever you guys tell me we're doing next. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dogs and I are going to be doing an episode at some point about something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, one of the, nailed it. One of the uh, This Is A's. Well, and, you know, well, actually, for This Is A Rewind, we started that show with the intent of talking about past wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and with all of the current bullshit that's been happening in wrestling news, that's all we've been talking about is current wrestling. <laughs> so I think our next episode is actually going to be about past wrestling, which is what the show was intended. So I that'll be exciting. I would love to hear you guys talk about Eddie Guevara. Guerrero, oh, excuse Guerrero. me. I combined I like, oh. Sammy Guevara and Eddie Guerrero. That was weird. Don't know why my brain did that, but I'd love to hear you guys talk about Eddie. Yeah. Like, I'd, I don't know. I'd love to hear you guys talk about Che Guevara. 
<laughs> you really have missed shitting on me, haven't you? <laughs> uh, Words are hard. I love you. Oh, man. I love you too, you asshole. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Death Ray, if people mm-hmm. want to reach out to you online, where can they do that at? Well, if you want to follow me personally, you can do that at Slay All Ray at Instagram. Um, if you want to follow This Is A Takeover, you can do that at in- on Instagram at This Is A Takeover or on Twitter at This Underscore Pod. And if you want to do follow all of us, all of our shows, um, on Twitter, we are, uh, and on Instagram, at Long Wall Podcast. And Gina, bless your heart, Belmont. <laughs> That's me. If people want to reach out to you, where can they do that at? Or um, follow you. Uh, on Instagram, um, but I... I probably am going to be taking a break from Instagram until after the wedding. That's fair. But yes. Um, yeah. Um, I'm getting married um, in November, but <laughs> Spoiler five weeks. Alert. spoilers. Oh my God. Did you really just say that? Oh my God. Her eyes just lit up oh in terror. Oh my God. <laughs> five weeks. Holy no. You're fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, but you can follow me at Broadway underscore baby 1218. All right. And if you would like to follow me online, you can do that on Instagram at DB Hensley. If you want to keep up with Long Walk Productions, you can visit us online at longwalk.us or search for Long Walk Productions and Long Walk Podcasts on Facebook. To see more of our original work or hear past episodes that are no longer streaming, you can follow the YouTube links in the show notes. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoy this show or any of the shows on the Long Walk Podcast Network, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. Thank you, David. And for This is a Takeover, I'm Shelby Ray Patterson. And I'm Gina Belmont. And you don't have to be called up to the main roster. You're doing fine where you're at.